up the prerequisites required for taking the EMT course. Um, so before I took mine, I had to take three online courses sanctioned by FEMA. What those had to do with were uh, what to do in the event of a natural disaster and how to set up a chain of command. So it talked about who was responsible for what, where you had to allocate resources, and all different kinds of things like that. And at the time, I didn't really think that learning those skills, especially in a really boring online format, would be beneficial later in the class and later when I worked in EMS. But it actually turned out to be very helpful because oftentimes you're gonna find yourself working with those who are both more experienced and those who are less experienced than you. And setting up who has, I guess the highest position, you could say, on scene really matters because that chain of accountability holds a lot of sway in the PCR, the patient care report, and it, it helps protect certain members of EMS and the patients from potential lawsuits. So if you have someone who's more experienced taking command of the situation, you're far less likely to face legal ramifications for your actions. So if you call medical direction, say, and once you make contact with medical direction, they really are the ones in charge. And you want to administer, say, something like the nitroglycerin, and you confirm that the patient's blood pressure is normal because it's a vasodilator. Uh, you also confirm that it's the patient's prescription. You confirm the, the route of ingestion. You confirm all the, all the right things, call medical, medical direction and they say, no, you still shouldn't do it. And you ask for confirmation one more time just to make sure, and they say, no, you shouldn't do it. And then something happens to the patient. The patient is gonna look most likely for a legal consequence. They're, they're gonna try to, I don't wanna make them sound like bad people or anything, but usually when you're under that kind of duress, your first instinct is maybe to sue someone. So for an EMT, that's scary because, you know, you, a lot of times they're just volunteers, they really don't have much money, and, and a medical lawsuit can incur a huge financial penalty. Uh, so, you know, that really strengthens your case when you say, look, this was the chain of command that we set up, I called medical direction, this is what I was told to do, blah, blah, blah. So, while the FEMA courses don't relate exactly to that and don't talk specifically about those kind of things, the information is very pertinent because you want to know just how to set that kind of thing up to keep yourself out of trouble. Uh, how you access those is you go to FEMA.org, I believe, and there's a whole bunch of course names and numbers. I go into more detail, if you'd like, in a later video showing you exactly how to access those courses, and then I could go into further detail on the information given in them so that you can easily pass the exams that come at the end and uh, I'll help you I'll help guide you through that whole process um, once you've passed those exams you should be ready to move on to the healthcare level CPR course which I'll make a video about next which is a really interesting course and that'll certify you at the healthcare provider level for administering CPR and they also throw the Heimlich maneuver into that one uh, that's a pretty important one. But first, you gotta get the FEMA stuff out of the way. Once you get that out of the way, you're on your way to becoming an EMT, and you'll be ready to take the full-fledged course.